In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of vendor bills in WAVE. I do have other WAVE demonstration videos, so be sure to check that playlist. Entering your vendor bills in your software can be a good way to track any vendor bills that you have coming up that you need to pay. You'll find the purchases menu on the left and there's a tab for bills, vendors, and products and services. So I'm just gonna walk through a demonstration and we're gonna look at all aspects of this. So what the products and services are, are items that you can create and they are linked or mapped to an expense account. And you can also find them under sales and payments. You can also link them to income accounts to put on your customer invoices. And it maps to an account. So whenever you use this item, it's going to be posted to that account. For example, if I edit the rent item, anytime I use this item on a vendor bill, it's going to be mapped to the rent expense account. You can put a price if you have a set price for something, but you don't have to, you can certainly leave this blank. And you can see that it has an option also to sell the item. But for this video, we're gonna focus on the expense side. Okay, I'm gonna go back to products and services. You can see I have two other items that don't have a price attached. They're just linked to an expense account. You don't actually have to use products and services on your vendor bills. You can directly put the category on the vendor bill itself, but it can be really useful if you have a certain description you like to use or a certain price. And instead of having to type all of that out every time you create a vendor bill, you can use the products and services to pre-fill some of that information. And I'm gonna demonstrate that so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna add a product or service and we're gonna do one for contractors. And we're gonna put a price on this and we're gonna link it to the contractor expense account. And then I'm gonna add a description and I can get pretty specific here, but whatever I put here is going to pull into that vendor bill. Okay, and then I just save it and that's it. Now I wanna look at the vendors. You can see here that I can add a vendor or I can import from a CSV file or Google Contacts. I'm gonna add a vendor manually. And you can see that it gives me two options here. I can add a regular vendor or I can add a 1099 NEC contractor. And it does give me some extra boxes here if I'm adding the NEC contractor so that I can put in extra information for that. I'm just gonna choose regular for this video. And then I can put in any additional information down here. And then it also has this extra line that says enter additional information where I can add an account number, phone number, and stuff like that. I'm just gonna put in an address and then just save. Okay, now that I have the vendor set up, I can go over to bills and create a bill. Now I already have a few bills here that are open and unpaid and a few that are paid. To add a vendor bill, I would just click on create a bill up here in the top right corner. And I'm just gonna choose the vendor, put in the date, a bill number if I have one. And then down here, I can either choose an item or directly choose an expense category. I'm gonna choose the item that I just created so you can see how it pre-fills with the information. So you can see that it pre-filled the category, it pre-filled the description, and it pre-filled the price. So this can save you time if you have items that you use over and over. And I'm just gonna, put in the hours, the quantity, and that's it. 
I can add a line if I want to add a line. I can delete a line and I can put extra notes. And that's it. And if I want to go back, I can view or edit that. And there's also a duplicate option if I want to create another vendor bill that's similar to that bill. For example, I might use that option to duplicate the rental vendor bill every month. Let's go ahead and look at the reports that are related to vendor bills. So I just went to reports on the left and here are the two reports related to vendors. I can look at purchases by vendor and I can also look at aged payables. The aged payables report is gonna help me figure out what is coming up that is due. I see one bill for ABC equipment that's 30 days or less overdue and one bill that I just created for $500 that is not yet overdue. Now I did also have a third bill over there on unpaid bills, if you remember. So let me go back to that. You can see that I also had this workspace rentals vendor bill that's unpaid, but because the date is in the future, it didn't show up on that report. So let me go back to the report. All I have to do is change the date to the future and update, and it will show that other vendor bill. So I just wanted to point that out so you would be aware that you do need to look at this date and make sure it reflects what you want to look at. If you want to look at a future date and include those bills on the report, then you will need to change this date. And then I just want to briefly look at that other report, the purchases by vendor report. It's broken down between which vendors have bills with expense categories and which vendors have bills with assets. And it has a column for purchases and paid purchases. And again, you do have to pay attention to the date if you wanna look in the future at bills that you have coming up also. Okay, and then here I am back at the bills and I just wanna demonstrate recording a payment. You just click on record payment select your payment method, select the date of the payment. The amount of the payment will pre-fill, but if you're paying a different amount, for example, if you're just paying half the amount, you would change this. And then you wanna select which account the payment is coming from. And you can put any notes if you want to. And then you would just save. And if I go over here to the accounting transactions, I can see that payment under that checking account that I chose. And then I just wanted to point out one other thing. When you are adding a product or service, it will only allow you to add an expense category or an income category. So if, for example, you're buying an asset, you will not be able to use a product or service for that vendor bill. So let me just go to a vendor bill and show you what I mean. I set up an example just for this purpose. We're gonna look at this ABC equipment vendor bill. Now you can see that I did not use an item here. I had to put the equipment account, which is an asset, directly on the vendor bill. So I just wanted to point that out that if you are buying an asset, you would have to put it directly on the vendor bill just like this, just like I did here. And then I also want to point out that WAVE does allow you to use their payroll feature to manage your payments for contractors. I found this help page on their website. I'm going to link this in the description in case you are interested in signing up for that. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and thank you for watching.